black body radiation, let us get to the black body radiation. Now, we will not spend so much time, but we will discuss all the questions whatever we get. So, now that we have realized that the radiation energy emitted is a function of, it is going to be a function of, we, we have not taken up these issues. It is going to be a function of temperature, we had fixed the temperature. If I vary the temperature, it is going to vary. Material of the body, whether it is a conductor or a non-conductor, condition of its surface that is whether it is a polished or rough surface. Okay. So, these are all the factors or the parameters which also affect the radiation of the amount of the radiation energy. Okay. Now, if I take a yeah. at a given the amount of the radiation energy emitted. That is just copied from the no, it is it is it is nothing. Copy paste problem. So this has to be removed. See, we tend to copy paste while making these notes. No, I have missed this out. This is the same sentence as this. Okay. So because fonts and all I can manage. So that while typing that has come out like that. Okay. Now as I keep saying, ideal cases are always our references. What is the what is a body which gives the maximum emissive power? That is what we say it has. That is the standard, and that is the black body and that was what was black body. What is a black body? First, let us define the black body. Black body absorbs all the incident radiation regardless of, it has no preference for wavelength and direction. So far, we were harping on wavelength and direction, for, but for black body, it has no preference. It is independent of wavelength and direction and for a prescribed temperature and wavelength, no surface can emit more energy than the black body. Okay. And although the radiation emitted by a black body is a function of wavelength and temperature, stated same thing again, it is independent of direction. What does this mean? It is also a what it is also a good emitter. It is the best emitter and it is a best absorber. Okay. It is said diffuse because it is independent of the word diffuse is used here because it is independent of direction. Is that okay? So, of course, this is just to show that black body is independent of direction, this is having a preference with direction that is real body. Okay. So, now coming back to Stephen Boltzmann law, this has been given to us just like that. So, we are also stating that Stephen Boltzmann law says that E b equal to sigma t to the power of 4, we have done this already, this relation this was again theoretically verified. It was first given by Stefan and theoretically verified by Boltzmann and this gives the maximum emissive power at all. I mean, it is, it is the sum of all the integration of all the wavelengths. As we, as we said, as I said earlier, for each temperature, there is a particular wavelength range within which my body is going to emit. It is going to emit. This this is integrated. We will see that how are we going to do that integration. Before we go get to that, this is I just want to spend some time because actually there was a paper by, you know, I will put this in Moodle. Uh, there was a paper by John in 2007. He has written this paper just to bring what are the contributions of Stefan. Okay. Joseph Stefan, his life and legacy in thermal sciences. Okay. I will be putting up this in Moodle. So, it so beautifully explains, although we know Stefan so much, we do not know him. I mean, he is anonymous to us in the sense that we do not really realize his contributions. He is Stefan. Okay. So, how did he figure out that he has to take t to the power of 4? It so happened that he was the first person to measure the thermal conductivity of gases accurately. In all the experimental results which were reported for radiation, there were losses but they were not able to quantify the losses because air was sitting inside. So, they had to minus the conduction, they had to deduct the heat loss because of conduction, because of the presence of air. So, for that I need to know the thermal conductivity of air. He was the first guy to measure the thermal conductivity of the air properly. He gave the number 0 0.0211, but today's value is 0 0.02635 that is the value 0 0.0, he measured 0 0.0234. Okay. 
but today's value is 0 0.02635. Because he could get the thermal conductivity properly, he did the Carew fitting. Earlier Carew fittings were tried was some constant into some constant to the power of t. Definitely it did not work, okay. but he deducted the losses and then he did simple Carew fitting only. Then he found that it was coming out to be t to the power of 4. How did he check that whether it works or well or not? Somehow he had the data of sun's temperature, he could predict the sun's temperature based on this and he found that it is 5800 Kelvin. That is how Stephen first gave, but then Boltzmann happened to join him as a student for his PhD and I do not know whether as a part of his PhD he did come out this explanation of sigma as 5 point. When he did, when Bold, Stephen did the curve fitting, it was around 5.15 into 10 to the power of minus 8. Boltzmann derived it and found it as 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8. But I do not know really whether Boltzmann did this as a part of PhD work or later work, I do not know. But Boltzmann continued to stay with Stephen, they were both in University of Vienna only. And Stephen is known for other problems also, actually moving boundary problems for melting. Someone was asking yesterday melting, that is for moving boundary problems also. In fact, there is a number called Stephen number, that is sensible heat upon latent heat. So, that ratio is called Stephen number. Stephen has not just made contributions in radiation. The point I want to strike is, he has measured key, he has solved moving boundary problems, that is the melting problems. He was, he was doing solidification of ice. How is ice getting solidified in North Pole and South Pole? That he had done, that is how he landed up with moving boundary problem. So, there are plenty of contributions of Stefan. And Stefan, Stefan was on a personal note, Stefan never left his lab. He slept in his lab most of the times, okay. But Boltzmann was quite contrary to that. Uh, the word used in this paper is peripatetic traveler, that is, he used to travel all, all around the place. But the unfortunate news in all this is that Boltzmann committed suicide, committed suicide. He did not have a natural death. So, it is a, it's a great loss. Perhaps he would have contributed much more than what he has contributed if he had not committed suicide. But it is believed that he did not get the credit as much as he thought that he should have got at that point of time. So, that is why he committed suicide. That is what people believe. But anyway, so, point is on a philosophical note, things are not that easy for even great scientists whom we believe that they are great today, okay. So, that is what I just wanted to, I just told all this because we do not, uh, this was all done in before 19, 19, uh, 20th century. So, we are, what we are studying today is done hundreds of years back, okay, okay. So, with that I guess we will move on to I will come to this little later. How can I imagine again one more controversial and uh, difficult to understand concept? Let us see whether we can complete this concept. How, how can I get a perfect black body? See, I understood that a perfect black body is one which emits perfectly and absorbs also perfectly. So, the visualization is that if I have a cavity, if I have a cavity, and if I have a small hole in that, if I have a small hole in that, whatever comes in, it undergoes multiple reflections and eventually it has to absorb. Converse of this also, we say it is undergoing multiple reflections. While undergoing multiple reflections, it has to go out through this hole. So, that is how we visualize that isothermal cavity with a small opening can be perhaps taken as a perfect black hole. It is true. In fact, when you calibrate, when you calibrate, when you when you are calibrating your heat flux sensors for radiation, perfect black body is indeed made as a cavity and you put your sensor inside. Only problem there is in this cavity, if I have to make it perfectly radiating, what is that I should be doing in that cavity? vacuum. If there is air and getting perfect vacuum is very difficult. You can only get some vacuum, you can go to few milli bars, but after that it becomes whatever vacuum pump you use, you are going to end up with small pressure. So, perfect vacuum getting is difficult 
So, if you cannot make perfect vacuum, what is the extraneous thing which gets into? Natural convection, natural convection, convection currents are generated. Then again, as I said, we cannot deduct, we cannot get solely one mode of heat transfer. So, natural convection is very hard to remove in my cavity. If, if I can generate a cavity in which there is no medium, it is a perfect vacuum, then I can get the black body. Is that okay? Is it convincing? Okay. So, then, then rest of the radiation, actually we have crossed the rough edges, we have crossed the rough route. Okay. So, we are now the track is straightforward. Now, we can afford to go fast. Fine. Coming back to Planck's distribution, this I cannot derive, I will have to just state Planck's distribution, spectral distribution is intensity. Now, I can understand the intensity lambda comma b for a black body is given to be 2 h c naught squared. What is c naught? Velocity of light in vacuum and h is the Planck's constant, k is the Boltzmann's constant and t is the absolute temperature. One word of caution in radiation as opposed to convection and conduction is temperatures are always supposed to be in Kelvin. So, I keep telling my students irrespective of which mode you are handling, blindly let us use Kelvin, because when I am handling two modes, then I am in trouble. So, I have to be very cautious. Why I have to be cautious? Let me blindly use Kelvin. So, on the first day of your class, you please tell our unit of temperature is going to be Kelvin, no, not degree Celsius. If we decide on that, there are, believe me, number of errors would be substantially less. They will be getting more marks. You do not know, they have made that mistake, you do not know how many marks to deduct now. Everything else is right. So, then you are in trouble. So, that is why let us take that conscious decision. Okay. If I have this Planck distribution, now this is again Planck. In fact, radiation is full of Nobel Prizes. Okay. So, there are five Nobel Prizes who have which have come from radiation work and everything has occurred independently almost at the same time. So, Planck, Planck was, he was Planck and he was awarded Nobel Prize for this Planck's distribution okay. and I will not spend too much of time and these were the guys who worked with again Helmholtz and Kirchhoff and again Bunsen, all of them stalwarts were together only actually okay. and it all happened in Europe only. You can see one commonness. Generally, in fluid mechanics also yesterday we saw Germany. So, everything is reasonably coming out from Europe. That is why Hitler thought that he is a great guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, then we have the emissive power. If I have to integrate for all the, what is that? If I have to get the emissive power, the Planck's distribution is dependent on only on, in this equation, it is dependent on what? wavelength and temperature. If I fix the temperature, if I fix the temperature and integrate it for all the wavelengths, for all the wavelengths, is that right? Is that right what I mean? If I have not, I have not integrated all the wavelengths, all that I have told, I have said is, why did I write E lambda, lambda comma t equal to pi i lambda comma b lambda comma t? What is that I have assumed in while writing that? pi I, I lambda comma b, when can I write that? We have derived a little while ago for, for no, 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 I, it is good that I got confused here and now it has slowed me down. Pi, 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 where did it come from? Ha, e equal to pi I, I did I, how did I come? I will have to go to radiation one to show that I thought that is if it is a diffuse emitter. Then there is no dependency on the direction, then I can, here it is written, a black body is a diffuse emitter, that is what we stated in the definition of the black body. So, I can write emissive power equal to pi i lambda comma b, so that is how I end up with e lambda comma b and of course, so many constants handling becomes difficult. So, we have grouped them and made 2 pi h c naught squared as c 1 and h c naught by k as c 2. So, now it looks little handleable, handleable or tractable. So, E lambda comma B lambda comma T equal to C 1 this. So, using this what can I do now? If I fix my temperature, 
if I fix my temperature, I can compute my emissive power. I can I can calculate my emissive power. So, who decides that for this temperature only this wavelength is coming out? Who is deciding that? By this relation. This relation is going to decide whether at a given temperature what is the wavelength range which is going to contribute for my thermal energy radiated or electromagnetic radiation radiated by virtue of temperature. When I say by virtue of temperature, I mean that in my relation, I am fixing my temperature. What will be the emissive power at temperature 0? 0 Kelvin, absolute 0, 0. Okay? Yeah, we will go for chai and come back. Okay?